Uh, hey guys, yeah, you well know that uh, tensions between the tribes and the state have really been high ever since 2019 when Governor Kevin Stitt attempted to renegotiate gaming compacts between the state and a number of tribes. And as we get into 2022, tensions continue to be high. Yeah, I think the Governor Stitt uh, has, is so bent on creating this narrative that tribes just don't have a place uh, in the state of Oklahoma. That Cherokee Nation Principal Chief Chuck Hoskin Jr. making those comments at a meeting with other tribal leaders Friday. They come after negotiations broke down over hunting and fishing agreements and as debate continues over the McGurk decision. Of course, that's the decision that led to the recognition that five tribes have reservations that remain intact today. The governors argued that McGurk plunged criminal law into chaos in eastern Oklahoma. In an MLK speech today, he said he'll keep fighting to overturn it. Tomorrow, we may know whether the Supreme Court will take a second look at the McGirt decision. Since that ruling came down two summers ago, in which the court ruled the eastern half of Oklahoma could still be a reservation, I have been speaking about its destructive consequences for our state. Tribal leaders have pushed back, saying the level of disruptions overblown and that the decision affirmed treaty agreements made many years ago. Hoskin adding this in a critical election year. He is the governor that's done the most damage to state tribal relations. I think of any governor in the history of this state. Fellow Muscogee Creek citizens and friends, I would like to update you on developments I have been working on on behalf of Creek Nation regarding the McGirt ruling. First, I am in the process of forming a commission consisting of Muscogee Creek people to serve in an advisory role that will provide recommendations that can be presented to the National Council. Also, this morning I had a brief call with Governor Stitt where I told him that I am establishing this commission and that I look for his commission and our Creek Nation Commission to coordinate and to come up with recommendations to address issues of mutual concern. Second, you may be aware that the Oklahoma Congressional Delegation released a statement yesterday saying they are considering federal legislation to resolve questions of uncertainty. I don't agree that federal legislation is needed because any jurisdictional issues can be resolved on a government-to-government -government basis through intergovernmental agreements or compacts. And I made it clear to Governor Stitt that I will continue to prioritize the needs and interests of Muscogee Creek Nation during this process. Good afternoon and thank you all for coming. I'm going to read a statement after which I will take your questions. The Violence Against Women Act of 2022 expanded tribal authority to prosecute non-Indians who assault tribal justice officers. Based on this authority, the Muscogee Creek Nation has issued an arrest warrant for Matthew J. Douglas, an Omogi County Jail official for the charge of protected status battery of Light Horse Police Deputy Chief Dennis North Cross. The incident took place at the Omogi County Jail on Monday, December 18, as Light Horse Police Officers, acting under the Cross Deputization Commission, of the Grand River Dam Authority attempted to deliver a suspect arrested for fentanyl possession and driving recklessly in a school zone. On Monday, December 18, a Light Horse police officer witnessed a driver moving on the wrong side of the road in a school zone. The officer effected a traffic stop and requested Omogi Police Department to attend the incident. Omogi Police Department informed him of their refusal to respond. The officer noticed drug paraphernalia in the passenger seat and the suspect consented to a vehicle search. During a search of the suspect's person, the officer witnessed a rubber case fall from the suspect's waistband, which he then admitted to the officer contained fentanyl. Acting under the authority of the Cross Deputization Commission with the Grand River Dam Authority, the officer effected an arrest as required by state law 
he transported the suspect to the Milwaukee County Jail for booking and processing. Today, we are releasing body cam video captured by Light Works officers in the jail facility. In it, you can clearly see jail officials belligerently refuse to accept a duly arrested suspect, threaten to fabricate charges against Light Works officers, and of course, the unprovoked assault on Deputy Chief North Cross. The video shows Matthew J. Douglas, a jail official, telling Light Horse Police Deputy Chief Dennis North Cross that it is the jail's policy to not accept any suspects from Light Horse Police. Later, you can hear jail staff say that they did not recognize Light Horse as real police. Light Horse officers informed Mr. Douglas that it is a violation of state law for a Mogi County Jail to refuse ex acceptance of any lawfully arrested person. After much debate, Mr. Douglas threatened to fabricate charges for illegally bringing a weapon into the jail and arrest Light Horse police officers. Light Horse officers continued to explain that state law requires the jail to receive the suspect. Mr. Douglas then threatened to lock Light Horse police officer in the receiving area with the suspect in custody if they did not leave and take the prisoner. Wallace can be heard in the video using his radio to instruct jail staff, do not roll my Sally Port door. Douglas then moved from the receiving area into the final booking area, and Light Horse Deputy Chief North Cross followed him into the control room where Deputy Chief North Cross was assaulted. I'm not taking him with You guys are taking him. I'm not taking him. County Central, do not roll my free book in the cell port door. Well, we can stay here all day. That's what we're going to do until you take him out of my building. I'm not taking him. Sir, I'm not taking him. You're the one committing. Not no, us. I'm not, sir. Yeah, I have not accepted him in my facility yet. He is still in your custody. He's not in my custody. Oh, Please. Open this. What is happening here? What is going on? Oh my God, this is all going to be. I'm so sorry. Who is it? Hey, you better take your hands off of it before you get that ass whipped. I'm sorry. Are you somebody with a little. Oh, no. Are you somebody with a little. You shut You shut the fuck up. You're going to put your hands on him? Don't come on. Sorry. Nope. Out of my building, gentlemen. You're gonna fucking go with us. I promise. See, he keeps putting his hands on it. Don't you put your hands on it. That's that's all I'm doing. You, you put your fucking hands on me first. Actually, that's a few of else. My life works. Your ass is going too. They're refusing to take it. Yeah, we, we don't recognize the PRD mission. Okay, this is the state of Oklahoma. That's the only option. It is the director saying we're not. The director of Hello. police? Yeah. Charlie, he's not there. Or the director of your jail? Charlie, what's yeah. there? Hey, there's a big difference there. Charlie, what's there? I don't even have to hear what the fuck you say because you're in the room. Director of Cleet? No. Or your jail? Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, that's who determines it, not your jail minister. Yesterday, after receiving your arrest warrant from the Muscogee Creek Nation District Court, Three Light Force officers went to inform Mr. Douglas of the warrant and provide him an opportunity to turn himself in today by 9 a.m. Body cam of these interactions will be available for release in the upcoming days. We are having ongoing conversations with the Attorney General Drummond, uh, with U.S. Attorney Chris Wilson, and we will be determining the next best steps. The assault of a light horse police officer at the Old Mogi County Jail is a direct result of the policies set by the Old Mogi County officials that disregard state law.
this faculty is already facing an ongoing investigation by the Oklahoma State Department of Health and the Office of Juvenile Affairs for the mistreatment of juveniles in their custody, including purposefully housing juveniles with adult inmates. The video clearly shows jail staff explaining that it is official jail policy as directed by the administrator and sheriff to violate state law and selectively refuse prisoners. So, in addition to the prosecution of Mr. Douglas, we are in discussions with the Oklahoma Attorney General and the U.S. Attorney's Office and the Department of Justice Civil Rights Division regarding the unlawful policies and disrespect from Mogi County officials both here at the jail and beyond. We understand that Omogi County officials dislike federal laws that grant tribal law enforcement jurisdiction, but those political opinions do not give Omogi County the right to disregard and violate laws. It certainly does not give them license to assault another police officer. We intend to assure that Matthew Douglas is held accountable for his assault on Deputy Chief North Cross. But we also believe that to top officials in Omogi County, they must be held accountable for the environment of lawlessness they are creating. None of these people are above the law. I will now take your questions. We've seen on social media some people saying Light Horse is federal. Is Light Horse a federal law enforcement body that has more authority over local law enforcement? In order to address your question being, is Light Horse a federal law enforcement officer? We are not. We are tribal law enforcement. And we stand on equal footing as the state law enforcement officers. We have certifications. We have training. Uh, that is the equivalent to what a lot of our uh, state officers uh, adhere to. Is there some confusion uh, on on the local level among officials about what the law actually says are there court cases pending you know that will eventually uh, delineate exactly the role for everyone uh, you know how trying to see what the resolution would be it's just a, a local dispute among confused individuals or a larger dispute of legalities of federal law the question being, is it a local dispute or are there larger legalities? There may be both. The ongoing litigation that we have with the city of Tulsa involves traffic tickets. Um, the issue with Omogi County, the Omogi Jail, is a little bit different in that they are not recognizing our authority whatsoever. So not only uh, uh, accepting jails, uh, jail inmates, and suspects, as is prescribed by the Oklahoma statutes, uh, there is a direct violation right there. I don't know what the misunderstanding is. That would be a good question for Oklahoma. Have you ever had a dispute like this before with the jail? Not with the jail, no. Because in my experience, law enforcement work together. Law enforcement want the same thing at the end of the day, to be able to go home safely to their families, to be able to police and provide a safe community for all of our children, for our elders, be able to provide a street and a sidewalk that we can safely walk down on and be proud to raise our children. We want that just as much as anyone. We want to work together with other jurisdictions to be able to provide that. But we are met with significant hesitation, resistance, and this build of lawlessness from Okmogi that has to be addressed. Do you know why there were so many cars, or at least it appeared to be so many tribal cars out by the jail? Were you anticipating a fight of some kind? Or? I, I appreciate the question about so many vehicles outside of the jail, because I think there's some misunderstanding as to when and why the vehicles were there. The picture that I have seen floating on social media it actually reflects Monday afternoon when the incident occurred. On Monday, 
when the officers observed their deputy chief being assaulted, they did call for backup. They did give a radio signal that says that we are in distress and we need backup, we need assistance. There's where you see the response, the full response of the Muscogee Creek Nation Light Force. They were there to respond, and that's why all of the vehicles were out front. Any other use of that picture with all of the vehicles out front is misleading. So that was a direct response to the incident that happened on Monday. Have you all attempted to get the jailer at his home, or do you believe the jailer is seeking shelter in the county jail? To that, I don't know. What I do know is that last night we tried to effectuate the warrant of arrest. Uh, Light Force officers took the criminal complaint as well as the warrant to the jail in an attempt to be able to serve it upon him. After a lot of discussion, we had made the administrative decision to give Mr. Douglas an opportunity to remain free and turn himself in at 9 a.m. this morning to the District Court of the Muscogee Creek Nation. As of now, and at this morning at 9 a.m., Mr. Douglas did not do so. There was a heavy police presence at 13th and Seminole, I believe. Is that were you all trying to get Mr. Douglas? Is that what that is, or is that a completely separate operation? It must be a separate because I'm, I'm not aware of that. That was a completely is. different warrant operation on a completely different charge for someone else. From your standpoint, does it matter if the jailer is tribal or not? To that extent, it doesn't matter. I want to make sure that the community knows that Light Force officers regularly, daily, put their lives on the line for the community, for the safety and welfare of our people and everyone in this area. To that same extent and that dedicate, level of dedication, my office and my prosecutors will make sure that any assault on an officer will be held accountable. We will bring charges. It is very important to me that the community knows that an assault against an officer will not go unanswered. We will hold those accountable who commit those crimes. So if you take him into custody, but they're not going to put him in his jail, where do you hold him, uh, Mr. Douglas? Mr. Douglas, being a non-native and being that we are acting under the VAWA expansion that was granted October 1st, 2022, we would put him in one of the jails that the Muscogee Creek Nation has contracted for holding. Sorry. Uh, are there currently any U.S. Marshals here in Okmulgee, whether present at the jail or here on the tribal complex, or have you been in touch with the U.S. Marshals Office regarding this conflict? I have not. We have not uh, asked for any other jurisdiction, in fact, to uh, assist us with this. We feel completely confident in being able to address this. We have not asked for the U.S. Marshals, and if there are some here, I, I don't, I, I wouldn't know the answer to that. How should the Muscogee officers have handled it um, with respect to tribal sovereignty, even with the disagreement over jurisdiction? In reviewing the video, um, I think that it would make someone rephrase your question to say, not necessarily how should Muscogee Light Horse officers handle it, it would have been how should the Muscogee, the Okmulgee County Jail have responded to a suspect who was found with fentanyl in a school zone when we're trying to make sure our neighborhoods and our school areas are safe, when we take that suspect in for booking and processing in the day or the night. Uh, since uh, the law expansion in 2022, have you filed any other charges uh, against individuals who are uh, not a tribal citizen for this specific example of the uh, tribal assault on a tribal justice personnel? I believe this may be our this may be our, our first uh, uh, offense under the expanded uh, jurisdiction on a non-native uh, assaulting a tribal law enforcement officer. However, with the number of expansions that the Muscogee Nation uh, put into and codified in our laws, uh, it was only a couple of days after the uh, adoption of that that we were filing charges on non-natives who were committing sexual assault crimes on children. 
cross-deputization a problem? Thank you for that question because it, it, it has been a problem with all the logging. Uh, we have actually had Oklahoma Attorney General Gettner Drummond and his first assistant to offer to sit down with uh, the Light Horse and uh, Muskogee Creek Nation officials as well as Oklahoma County officials. There was a lot of talk um, and discussion, uh, but nothing nothing has uh, been realized as a result of that. A cross deputization agreement would have certainly been able to address this situation and would have prevented it. We have cross deputizations with a number of municipalities, counties, uh, and other agencies across our reservation, and they are working very well. And recognizing that at the end of the day, we have that same goal to provide safety and welfare for everyone. I, one more question. Yeah, is the Grand River Dam Authority cross deputization agreement is that available online somewhere? I I would not be. I'm not sure about that. Um, I'm not certain if it is online. I do know that it's valid. Um, I looked at the title, uh, the enabling statutes uh, within the Oklahoma law to be able to satisfy that the Grand River Dam Authority. Uh, Having jurisdiction over more than just the waterways and so forth has police authority over a handful of counties, Oklahoma certainly being one of them. I have one more question. Why do you think it's been so hard to be able to work with multiple? Unfortunately, I would say that part of the difficulty is illustrated by this incident. The refusal to acknowledge what the law says, even when it's Oklahoma law, um, their blatant refusal makes it difficult for us to be able to do our job. It makes it difficult for us to be able to sit down with them and say, okay, let's work together. We're going to have to renegotiate what is our starting point. Um, because in reality, I think that this is the first layer of an onion, if you will, of a long history of conflict, of racism, and a number of issues that have existed. And um, we look forward, as, as ugly as it may be, we think it's necessary and we look forward to pulling those back because we want justice at the end of the day, safe neighborhoods, and the safety and welfare of all. Mado. Thousands of miles of northeastern Oklahoma now considered Indian Territory after the Supreme Court's McGirt ruling. Now that decision changing the way law enforcement investigates crime involving Native Americans in this part of the state, turning a large amount of cases over to the Muscogee Creek Nation Tribal Police. Two Works for You's investigator Aaron Conrad digs deeper into the ruling's impact and how they are working to keep you safe. The McGirt ruling taking Light Horse Police from a relatively small department to a large one in less than 24 hours. Officers and investigators now needed in 11 different counties here in Green Country. The Muscogee Creek Nation Light Horse Police Department is much like any other law enforcement agency in Green Country. Its officers patrol streets, answer calls, and investigate crimes. 104 Creek Nation. They just happened to do it in Indian Territory. On July 9th, when the decision came down from the Supreme Court, Immediately, I was ecstatic about it. As a tribal citizen, as a, as a Muscogee citizen, I was very happy with it. As a, as a new chief of police or acting chief of police, I was just even more excited. But then things started rolling in and you realize, one, this is historical. Two, nothing like this has ever happened. And three, I got a lot of work ahead of us. Chief Daniel Wynn III took over the department this summer just in time to have to take the agency from 35 employees to 65 and growing in record time. The demand for light horse officers and investigators skyrocketing. One of the biggest changes has been 
the fact that we are answering a lot more calls. And so our call volume has quadrupled over the past four months. So every month it's just been going up and up and up. The tribe now investing millions of dollars to expand operations. The first installment, $2.2 million to hire dozens of positions from dispatchers to patrolmen to detectives. This is a map of the reestablished boundaries of the Muscogee Creek Nation. 911 calls now coming in from every corner of the map. Not only is the department growing, they're also forming partnerships with other departments to ensure coverage in every corner of the reservation. The thing about the cross deputization agreement that those officers, whether they be in Broken Arrow, Tulsa, um, you follow wherever they're at, when someone calls, they're acting under our cross, cross deputization agreement, our cross commission. So they're light horse officers as well. With the majority of Tulsa and Tulsa County now within the boundaries of the tribe, Tulsa Police tell Two Works For You, every officer within the department is cross deputized. That also goes for the Tulsa County Sheriff's Office. We have to work together. And you know, and these MOUs or these cross deputizations as they're known, uh, allow us to do that. So it's extremely important. It's also a benefit to smaller green country departments. Those agencies now have access to Creek Nation resources. We have a dive team. We're working on our emergency response teams. We have community outreach officers. We have game rangers. We have investigators, canines. Um, anything that you're going to find at a bigger department, we have here. And while the Creek Nation is working in high gear to make sure the department has what it needs, Chief Wind says it doesn't stop here. This is only step one in a three-phase process of funding for expansion. The next two phases over the next two years, pumping money into the department's needs as they continue to assess what the public needs to ensure all Oklahomans get the protection they deserve. We are Oklahomans just like just like everybody else. We just happen to be on the reservation now. In Indian Country, Aaron Conrad, two works for you. From building casinos to building courtrooms, the Cherokee Nation has been rapidly expanding its judicial system since the U.S. Supreme Court announced that landmark ruling on McGirt last July. Reporter Jason Doyle travels to Tahlequah to get a behind the scenes look at what's been built. People should feel confident that the government that is taking this on is the great Cherokee Nation. We're doing it. We can do it. We're going to do it well. Cherokee Nation Principal Chief Chuck Hoskin Jr. says even before the U.S. Supreme Court handed down its McGirt versus Oklahoma decision more than a year ago, the tribe began examining what it would take to handle an increased caseload. We did a study early on uh, about how much it would cost the Cherokee Nation to meet the very basic uh, obligations under McGirt. It's about 35 million in new dollars every year. Once McGirt was applied through the Oklahoma Court of Criminal Appeals Hogner versus the state of Oklahoma decision in March of this year, the tribe's justice system was ready to engage. Uh, since McGirt applied to our reservation just a few months ago, we have been very uh, uh, busy and putting a lot of effort into holding uh, lawbreakers accountable. So that's the reason we have over 1,200 cases transferred from the wrong jurisdiction, the state, to Cherokee Nation jurisdiction. So we're doing our job. Despite Oklahoma, there's other treaties going on as well. Despite what Muscogee Nation has been fighting for over 100 years. Me, myself, I've already had multiple cases dismissed because of the McGirt Act, you could, where they pulled me out of my vehicle illegally because I asked for a light horse. I told them the horse went. They didn't fire Chris Petit over that. But what David Hill brought up the other day is Article 6. That's where every judge is supposed to recognize any treaty. Think about that. Under our Constitution, your yes. Constitution, they are supposed to legally recognize our treaties. Regardless of when and where, but the date it was signed. Article 6 says that yes. in their constitution. And I will continue to fight. If you guys have any problems, use my case. Case is, when you're standing in court, whether, whether it's for possession, whether it's for a D illegal <laughs> search, illegal DUI, which I was not under the influence, but Chris Petit told me twice on camera I was going to jail for being an asshole that night. And that was because I asked for the light horse. I asked for the sheriff. I asked for Marsha. He refused to call her. Hughes County, Holdenville versus Wind, you can look it up. So, and, and Kawita versus Wind. Serious guys, these are our rights. These are our rights. They're, if you don't know, what's sad is if you don't know your rights, they're just gonna, they're gonna pull you out of the car. They're gonna charge you. 
it, but if you know your rights, it, I, two things happen. Either they get mad, and then they get more aggressive, and they'll call somebody who's actually in charge like they're supposed to do, or they're going to act accordingly. And the thing I had with uh, with police departments that like, when they say they don't have to call a lot horse, that means the person who hired them told them that. Because if I'm your boss and you can ask anybody who's ever worked for me and I tell you to do something, that's what you're going to do. So if I tell you if a Muskogee citizen says they want a light horse there, you call the light horse. Guess what my employees are going to do? So it doesn't just stop right there at the foot officers, at the, at the uh, control officers. It's at their highest command that they get these orders. They don't have to call a light horse. And our Miko, David Hill, said that's not ever going to happen again. When we ask for a light horse, they're to call a light horse. I'll even subpoena our Mikos if we have to. And I encourage everybody else to do the same. Yes. Madoe. No.